Excuse me, little dog. Hi, right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking the most outrageously over the top beautiful day. Probably of 2023, just a spectacularly glorious day here on the planet during the collapse of everything here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. And uh, Labor Day weekend is kicking off and it is going to be a beauty and we are slammed. And uh, so before the deluge hits, do what I do every day and uh, that is <clears throat> sit here and chronicle the collapse of, uh, of a planet. Uh, so I've had a few of you uh, contact me and say, why don't you ever talk about China? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, other than the Belt and Road Initiative and China eating the planet and stuff, there's all of this uh, turmoil going on out there from the uh, Western propaganda machine about the Chinese economy and Chinese military uh, aspirations and all of this. And guys, the reason that I don't have much to say about it is because I have no business talking about it. I, you know, I, I have the same propaganda to read that anybody else reads. Uh, you know, it's kind of like talking about the Loch Ness Monster. You know, I, I could talk about as intelligently, I could probably talk more intelligently about the Loch Ness Monster than the Chinese economy and military. Now, of course, uh, just as someone who does support the, you know, the continued existence of our fellow Earthlings on the planet. I am a huge cheerleader of the collapse of the Chinese economy, <clears throat> understanding fully well that the, the collapse of the Chinese economy <coughs> would certainly be a huge step forward. Uh, at, at least into the economic collapse of the planet. Uh, and as far as the upside of a global economic collapse uh, is concerned, it would be a good thing. Uh, there might be a few little things that uh, people cheering on the collapse of the Chinese economy might not be factoring in, but uh, here is one kind of spin-off from this. And this one, this article, I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Tom uh, from Vermont for sending me today's Chronicle of the Collapse simply because I don't talk about it th this much. This is how the U.S. military is certainly... Uh, going to take the China scare propaganda to uh, lead us into in this no shit Sherlock. So this long article is from The Conversation by who is the author of this story uh, here on The Conversation. Uh, titled <clears throat> U.S. Military Plans to Unleash to Unleash Thousands I guess the wind blew down my wind guard there you go it is a windy day U.S. Military Plans to Unleash Thousands of Autonomous War Robots 
over the next two years. Uh, so I guess this is... Uh, I, I guess this is this is in the pipeline. This is not one of these little carbon capture fantasies. This really is happening. So the the author of this article is a fellow named Peter Layton, who is a visiting fellow from the Griffin Asia Institute at. Uh, at Griffith, the Griffith Asia Institute at Griffith University, uh, whatever that means. So this is what Peter Layton, who I'm sure knows a hell of a lot more about the subject than I ever will, has to tell us about this. <clears throat> Take it away, Peter. The United States military plans to start using thousands of autonomous weapons systems in the next two years to counter China's growing power. U.S. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks announced in a speech on Monday the so-called Replicator Initiative. The Replicator Initiative aims to work with defense and other tech companies to produce high volumes of affordable systems for all branches of the military. Military systems capable of various degrees of independent operation have become increasingly common over the past decade or so, but the scale and scope of the U.S. announcement makes clear the future of conflict has changed. The age of war-fighting robots is upon us. Over the past decade, there has been considerable development of advanced robotic systems for military purposes. Many of these have been based on modifying commercial technology, which itself has become more capable, cheaper, and more widely available. More recently, the focus has shifted on to experimenting with how to best use these technologies in combat. Huh. Russia's war in Ukraine has demonstrated that the technology is ready for real-world deployment. And that is, uh, you know, I also don't talk about this little kerfuffle going over there, on over there in Ukraine, for the same, even more for the same reason that I don't talk much about China that there is no source of objective information what is going on over there. Every, everybody uh, reporting on that little kerfuffle over there in Ukraine has, a, uh, has an, an agenda, has a political agenda. Every one of them is propaganda. I don't care who it is. It is every single bit of the shit coming out of there is pure propaganda. I don't believe anybody. The truth is somewhere in the middle. But anyway, it, it has. A, you can't argue that what we're seeing over there is, you know, testing out all of these new weapons systems, particularly with drone and robotic warfare. <clears throat> loitering munitions, don't you love that term? Loitering munitions, a form of robot air vehicle, have already been widely used to find and attack armored vehicles in artillery, in artillery and, and, and I don't know if this next sentence is propaganda or not. My guess is that it is. So I would take this next sentence with a giant grain of salt. 
Ukrainian naval attack drones have paralyzed Russia's Black Sea Fleet, forcing their crewed warships to stay in port. I have no clue if that sentence is 0% true or 100% true. The truth, probably somewhere in the middle. But anyway, you can't deny this. Military robots are an idea whose time has come. Robots are everywhere. In her speech, Hicks talked of a perceived, a perceived urgent need to change how wars are fought. She declared in somewhat impenetrable Pentagon speak, that the new replicator program would, quote, field attributable autonomous systems at scale of multiple thousands in multiple domains within the next 18 to 24 months, close quote. Decoding this, Autonomous means a robot that can carry out complex military missions without human intervention. Attritable, a word I have never heard. Attritable means the robot is cheap enough that it can be placed at risk and lost if the mission is of high priority. Such a robot is not quite designed to be disposable, you know, like a Bic lighter or if you've watched these uh, YouTube videos of them dumping all of these tanks and uh, helicopters and giant SUVs into the bottom of the uh, Gulf of you know, uh, they're not, those are disposable. Such a robot is not quite designed to be disposable, but it would be reasonably affordable, you know, to the U.S. taxpayers fitting the bill for this. So many of them can be bought and combat losses replaced while the U.S. taxpayer picks up the tab. Finally, multiple domains means robots on land, at sea, in the air, and in space. In short, robots everywhere for all kinds of tasks. <clears throat> for the U.S. military, Russia is considered, quote, an acute threat, but China, China is, I'm assuming this is what Hicks called the, quote, pacing challenge, the pacing challenge against which to benchmark its military capabilities. China's People's Liberation Army and I do believe this is true and is not propaganda, China's People's Liberation Army is seen as having a significant advantage in terms of mass. It has more people, more tanks, more ships, more missiles, and so on. <coughs> the U.S., which may or may not be propaganda, the U.S. may have better quality equipment, but China wins on quantity. So far, at least, but uh, we have, this is the Environmental Coffee House China, mu uh, China Mug. Yes, <laughs> Sandy's China Mug. All right. <clears throat> By quickly building thousands 
it would be nice if we really had a better number than thousands of, quote, attributable autonomous systems, close quote. The replicator program will now give the U.S. the numbers considered necessary to win future major wars. The imagined future war of most concern is a hypothetical battle for Taiwan, which some postulate could soon begin. Again, is it propaganda, this saber rattling over Taiwan? Uh, <laughs> is anybody stupid enough to start a war over Taiwan? Uh, it, it, you, you just you just think about it for five minutes, which is about how many minutes I've thought about it, and said nobody is going to be stupid enough to start a battle over Taiwan. Nobody in China, nobody in the U.S. is that stupid. But I have continually underestimated the uh, depths of human stupidity. So, some people are postulate that uh, a war could soon break out between China and uh, the U.S. over Taiwan. Recent tabletop war games have suggested large swarms of robots could be the decisive element for the U.S. in defeating any major Chinese invasion. However, Replicator is also looking further ahead, you know, than the brewing snafu in Taiwan, and aims to institutionalize mass production of robots for the long term. Argues Hicks from this speech uh, a few days ago, quote, We must ensure China's leadership wakes up every day, considers the risks of aggression, and concludes today is not the day. And not just today, but every day between now and 2027, now and 2035, now and 2049, and beyond, close quote. So, one great concern about autonomous systems is whether their use can conform to the laws of armed conflict I always love hearing about the laws of armed conflict, the, uh, the oxymoron of, uh, of, uh, of, well, war criminal, uh, is, is that an oxymoron or that's a redundancy? Uh, <laughs> war criminal and war crimes. Yes, the laws of armed conflict. <coughs> Optimists argue, optimist, uh, what we call clueless morons on this channel, argue that robots can be carefully programmed to follow rules. And in the heat and confusion of combat, they may even obey better than humans. Pessimist, you know what we call realist here on this channel, counter by noting not all situations can be foreseen and robots may well misunderstand and attack when they should not. The pessimists have a point. Among earlier autonomous military systems, the phalanx close-in point defense gun and the Patriot surface-to-air missile have both misperformed. Yes, 
the Patriot has proven effective in shooting down attacking ballistic missiles, but has also twice shot down friendly aircraft during the second Gulf War, killing their human crews. Clever design. Yes, clever design. We are the clever ape. May overcome such problems in future autonomous systems. However, Hicks promised, quote, don't you love the U.S. Secretary of De Defense making promises? Uh, do you believe this promise? She promised a, quote, responsible and ethical approach to AI and autonomous systems, close quote, in her speech. Yes, a responsible and ethical approach approach to uh, AI controlled autonomous systems, you know, killing people, blowing up, uh, con you know, <coughs> that kind of responsible and ethical approach, which suggests any system able to kill targets will still need formal authorization from a human to do so. Well, Ah, uh, <laughs> there you go. It's, it, you know, it's not hard. I, I'm quite sure YouTube is still full of videos with these basically 18-year-old redneck kids playing, uh, you know, sitting in their little uh, bunkers pressing buttons and killing innocent uh, civilians and high-fiving each other, you know, so what we're talking about is authorizing, uh, you, you know, some teenage kid from Arkansas to press a button, uh, you know, after getting programmed in boot camp. This is what they mean by formal authorization from a human that really, uh, that really means a lot. The U.S. may be the first nation to field large numbers of autonomous systems, but other countries will be close behind. China, this is not propaganda, is an obvious candidate to start churning out their own thousands and thousands of autonomous uh, killer robots <coughs> with China's great strength in both artificial intelligence and combat drone production. So this is going to be a regular spy versus spy for those of us who remember Mad Magazine. Libya and Israel, among others, have reportedly deployed autonomous weapons, and now Turkish-made drones have proved important in the Ukraine war. Australia is another country keenly interested in the possibilities of autonomous weapons. The Australian Defense Force is today building the MQ-28 Ghost Bat. Don't you love the name Ghost Bat? Autonomous fast jet air vehicle. Uh, there, this is Australia is also building robot mechanized armored vehicles, robot logistic trucks, and robot submarines and is already using the Blue Bottle robot sailboat for maritime border surveillance in the Timor Sea and in, in a move that foreshadowed the replicator initiative the Australian government just last month called for local companies to suggest how they might build very large numbers of military aerial drones in country in the next few years. 
uh, at least one Australian company is already on the move, sending a number of its cheap cardboard-bodied drones to bolster Ukraine's defenses. A cardboard drone killer robot. <laughs> it really sounds high-tech to me, putting all of this AI in cardboard killer robot drones. What do you think, little dog? You need to be looking up at the sky for incoming killer cardboard drones. But of course, they, uh, the, the, the big question, which doomers don't have to go far before asking, is uh, when will all of this military... AI, killer robots, and all of that stuff that uh, we're cheering on, you know, killing all those other people, you know, outside of the great, uh, the great U.S., uh, at what point will the, the military, meaning your local police force, be uh, sending out cardboard drones with uh, warheads on them to make sure that you're keeping your grass mowed. Anyway, guys, you know, what the, the death by a million cuts that uh, we're, we're going to see over the next few years. I, I, I mean, everywhere we look now, the mainstream media is, is sounding like some sci-fi horror story uh, from, from the 1950s. Uh, all of this dystopian science fiction is, uh, is coming, coming true. But it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, and uh, I have a crowd of vacation tourists out here taking off this gorgeous Labor Day weekend, so I need to stop ranting about killer drones <clears throat> and uh, go change a sheet while I still can. My guys.